All right, well, here we are. We're doing uh, the Cincinnati Reds uh, hitting um, uh, preview for 2024. I'm Sean Childs of, of fantasyanalyst.substack.com, making my way through the player pool, pool to prepare to go to Las Vegas to draft some fantasy teams in the National Fantasy Baseball Championship. A lot of fun. A lot of aggravation when they don't perform up to expectations, but that's the battle we have here. So, <clears throat> you know, last year the Breds had a 20-game improvement in wins. They really made a nice run. They have a really interesting core of young players, uh, especially their batters. Uh, a couple of, you know, developing arms, but they haven't got there. They just needed to be a little healthy and, may, you know, and add a, um, another pitch or two to kind of get there and even improve their command. But um, so <clears throat> they've had a, the Reds have won – had a winning season um, twice over the last three seasons. Um, they haven't they haven't made the playoffs in the last three years, and uh, <clears throat> and they made um, nine times they've missed the playoffs since 2013. They have five World Series titles with the last one coming in 1990. Um, since they finished 25th in ERA, uh, 4.83 uh, relievers were a little bit better, 4.11 finished 16th. The relievers had 48 wins, second in baseball. 53 saves, number one in baseball, 30 losses. So they were plus 18 out of the bullpen. Uh, it's pretty good when you consider when you're, when you're looking at their relievers. Even last year, they weren't, you know, the best in the league, but probably their offense carried them. Uh, 652 one inning, uh, point one innings, uh, 617 strikeouts. Um, their offense um, was kind of middle of the pack. They finished ninth in runs, uh, 783, 14th in home runs, 198, um, ninth in, RBI 747, and they led the majors in stolen bases with 190 on 238 attempts. Success rate 79.8%. Um, they sum they signed um, third baseman Jameer Candelario. Um, kind of a surprise, especially with they got so many young players. But um, he's you know he's not like an impact player, but they stunned pretty good contact. They added Frankie Mon Montas for depth and Nick Martinez. So Mar Martinez will probably be the swing guy. Emilio Pagan will add a little length to their bullpen, and uh, Brett Sutter will uh, also give him a lefty there. So um, they moved on from Hunter Renfro, Harrison Bader, which is uh, he was a late season ad last year. Um, Joey Votto, Nick Senzel, uh, Will Myers really didn't do much, and uh, starting pitcher uh, Justin Dunn that was kind of um, banged up and or battle injuries, and he just really didn't. So the start, front of the rotation looks pretty good with Hunter Green, Nick Lodolo. Um, really after doing the team, I really kind of like a couple of their young arms too. Um, you know, so it'll be interesting to see their develop. But their offense, you know, they have a you know an excellent core of young players. Um, you know, Matt McLean, Ellie, Ellie De La Cruz, uh, Christian Incarnacion Strand, and uh, Noel Noel V uh, Marte. So it's just a, you know they look just on the verge to be one of the better teams in the uh, the National League Central um, once they get their pitching. Um, uh, under uh, under control. Um, let's see here. So the first up for player profile is let's go with him. Uh, uh, T.J. Uh, Friedel. Friedel. Um, he was a kind of a um, longtime minor leaguer. He was in the season minors for six seasons. Hit 275, 40 home runs, 208 RBIs, 89 steals, over 1856 at bats. So he's like a you know, a 10 to 13 home run guy, maybe give you 20 something steals, something like that. Um, and he had two years, of, he come two, he had two years of experience at AAA, 269, 20 home runs, 74 RBIs, 23 steals, over 591 at bats. So he looked like he made a little progression there. His walk rate was 10.1, you know, pretty good. You know, get, you know, can you hit up in the lineup? Strikeout rate was favorable, 17.3. Um, he had got his first chance in, um, Play, playing for the Reds in 2022, had like, I don't know, about 40% of the season. Uh, did a little bit of something. Um, but last year they switched to him, made 123, uh, played 126 games in center field. And that's kind of their, you know, he looks like he's the only kind of center field option right on the team right now. Um, but, you know, Jake Fraley could play a little bit, but he's more of a corner outfield. But uh, he played really, really, really kind of a uh, good season for Friedel. <coughs> Um, he had a uh, hit 279, 73 runs, 18 home runs, 66 RBIs, and 27 steals over 488 at bats. Um, he did land on the injury list twice. 
uh, with a oblique in the hamstring issues. Um, over his final uh, 40 games, the bat really kind of picked up a little bit. 293, 26 runs, eight homers, 20 RBIs, five steals, over 140 at bats. So that's pretty like a 30, 20 guy, uh, pretty good average. And the runs would have been like 180 RBIs. So not not repeatable over the long season, but you know, help fantasy teams uh, move up the standings. Um, he was really good against lefties, 354, three home runs, 12 RBIs, over 96 at bats. And his um, his best home run production in RBIs came at home, 13 home runs, 41 RBIs. Um, his exit velocity, nothing great there, 86.7. Hard hit rate, 27.6. So he doesn't jump out. He has a slightly uh, fly ball favoring swing path, 41.9%. So um, over the last two seasons with um with the Reds, he had 26 home runs and 22 barrels. So that's one of those guys that just, you know, he's not going to hit a lot of balls uh, really long. But, you know, um, he's hoping that when he does connect, they leave the yard. His um, With the Reds, his strikeout rate, 16.5, was pretty good. You know, but, you know, it was a good area. And his, his walk rate, 8.5, was uh, solid. So he's going to be the probably the favorite to win the um, – uh, the starting center field job for the Reds this year. Um, he doesn't really kind of jump off the page where he's like a stud or anything like that, but he's, you know, when you have nice players and upside behind him, he just needs to kind of do his job, get on base and hopefully improve. Um, last year in the fantasy points gain score, he was the 51st hitter. Um, that was, you know, he, you know, the, a lot of the better players in front of him had, you know, a lot more at bat. So, um, his ADP of 158 mid February in the high stakes market, he's the 92nd batter drafted. So there's a little bit of value there when you consider and he could he could uh, have a little more length of the season and the Reds could score a lot more this year. Last year he had 384 as 488 bats batting first or second in the batting order. Cincinnati will run a lot, you know, they'll, they'll, they get a lot of green lights. So kind of, you know, more of a, you know, 15, 25 guy with maybe a little upside three category player. Um, and just um, in it, but if he doesn't, you know, hit well out of the gate, um, they have enough pieces where they can move him around. He might end up at, you know, at the bottom of the lineup. But nice, uh, steady player, Matt McLean. Uh, really, really had, um, really kind of came on last year, and and it was kind of, I guess, his overall production was better than I expected, and maybe I didn't respect him enough when he got called up last year. Didn't fight for him in the waiver wire in the high stakes market, um, but he ended up. Uh, really helping some teams. So um, in 2022, um, he in, in the minors at double A, he really hit 232, you know, the batting average, you know, sometimes you look at these players, you know, the low batting average kind of, you know, kind of sticks in your mind more, but he did have, he had 371 at bats. This, he had 17 home runs, 67 uh, runs, 58 RBIs and 27 steals. So that projected pretty good over 550 at bats. Um, but his strikeout rate was much higher than um, his college career. Um, strikeout rate was 28.1, but he did take you know a lot of walks, 15.5%. So the following season, they called him up to AAA over the 40, first 40 games. He was just he was on fire, hit 340, uh, 30 runs, 12 home runs, 40 RBIs, and 10 steals, over 144 at bats. The Reds called him up. His contact batting average was elite. Um, just uh, you know, at, at AAA 458, that's just an insanely high number. The two previous seasons and, you know, it was 366, 352. So kind of an overachiever, but his college resume was 409. So you're trying to, you know, find out where he's um, matching up in that area. But at AAA, his, his strikeout rate went to 20.6, walk rate 16.7. So that's top of the lineup bat, getting the approach, approach under control. Um, comes up to the Reds. He has plenty of power. He has 16 home runs over 365 at bats. Uh, contact batting average stayed well over 400, 424, really good number, but he struck out kind of like he did in double A, 28.5%. Walks went back a little bit, 7.7. Uh, he was really good against lefties. Um, six home runs, 326 with 17 RBIs over 92 at bats. Um, but he did struggle over a little bit over his last 20, 229 at bats. He struck out 75 times, 29.5% strikeout rate, a little bit higher. Um, but he was okay at the plate, 271, um, you know, 13, um, 13 home runs, 35 RBIs, and 11 steals. Um, his exit velocity, um, nothing really special there, 89.3. Hard hit rate, a little bit better, 42.4. Pro probably rent, rank in the top 25% of the league. So so last season and um, between last season, 
in AAA in the majors. He's kind of outperformed his scouting report, but that doesn't mean he's, you know, a better player than the scouts expected. So his ADP is 65 this year. He's the 38th hitter off the board. Um, he's ranked fifth at second base. I think of him as more of a 270 hitter. Uh, for now, he could potentially be better, but the, the home runs of the 2030 profile look pretty good. Um, but, you know, I think this year it might not go as smooth as last year, especially if he doesn't get his strikeout rate under control. So there's a lot of pluses, um, but, you know, he's not a slam dunk, especially in the batting average. But, you know, he's he, if he uh, if he if he plays well and the rest of the lineup um, develops behind him, he, he's going to there. He's going to have a special season. I moved up uh, Jonathan India to third. So w- when you're looking at the Reds, they got a lot of young guys. And some with some potential swing and miss. Um, I figured India was a little more stable. Um, had that really really nice season in 2021 uh, when he came up. He had 21 home runs, 12 steals, hit 269, 98 runs. You know, just like a really steady player um, with potentially more upside. Um, really helped fantasy teams were you know because he was a waiver wire guy that season. So, um, but you know, last year I'm sorry, 2022 he. Um, in April and May, um, he landed on the in, uh, injury, wrist, injury list for 54 days with a hamstring, hamstring issue. Um, as a result, he only hit like 204, over 113 at-bats, two home runs, nine RBIs, one steal, kind of crushed fantasy teams. When he came back, he just wasn't the same player. 273 at 273 at-bats, hit 267, 40 runs were okay, um, eight home runs, 32 RBIs, two steals, just didn't match the – you know, once he got the hamstring injury, didn't run anymore. Last year, same thing. He um, he missed uh, six weeks with um, at the end of the year with a battle with uh, plantar fasciitis. Um, so that really kind of restricted his final season there. Um, but for his first 240 at-bats, he had 279, 48 runs, really good for that number of bats. Six home runs weren't enough. Um, 31 RBIs, 12 steals, so a little bit healthy with a hamstring. Potentially could have been a you know, 25 steel guy in this uh, offense, especially where they run a lot. Um, but over his final 214 at bats before he got hurt, um, he only hit 206, 30 runs, 30 RBIs, but he did hit 11 home runs and only a couple steals. So, you know, the, that part of the equation is looks like more steady. Um, he probably potentially could actually bat, actually McLean could bat lead off and he could potentially hit second uh, and change it um, down there. But, um, you know, they have these extra players this year and the signing of Candelario. So, you know, he's kind of looking like he's the odd guy that doesn't have a job. So I think that he he is a, a way I classified it is that he's kind of a professional bat. He's had a couple of seasons. He hasn't really kind of popped out, but he can do a lot of stuff. He doesn't strike out a lot of strikeout rates, 20.6, walk rates, 9.8. So that area is kind of stable. His RBI rate in his career is not 16.5 percent. So the runners are base is pretty good. Um, his contact batting average the last two years have been 322 and 329. So that's below his previous three seasons of minor majors, 340, 349, and 366. So I think there's potentially for uptick in batting average. So his ADP is 243, which is pretty favorable. Um, and it might even um, slide a little bit, depends on how the structure of the Reds look like in spring training and who's playing well and the coach speak of whatever. But I think of him as a, you know, a nice steady player with a 280, uh, 80 runs, 80 RBIs, 20 home runs, 20 steals type of player. If you got 550 at bats, I know, I think I heard um, Jeff Erickson say that yesterday that he had a, you know, a slow down a little bit with another hamstring issue, but I don't know for sure, but I think he'll be fine. I didn't see any injury news when I was looking at the, his profile. So, a nice steady player, we're not, but I think that he probably projects more up in the lineup. But you know, this lineup, you know, when I go through these players, I try to put them in some sort of order, but I have to do the research. So, but I'm not going to backtrack and move players around just because I have the the number where they hit in the order. It's a little more, you know, it creates a little more work that I don't want to don't have time for. So, um, next one up is Spencer Steer. He was the one player last year that kind of really kind of came out of nowhere where you looked at him and you thought, you know, that he was an okay player, um, had some home runs. Um, his and average hit rate was, you know, in 2021, 1.906 in the next year, 1.880. So that kind of showed that he had a potential with 550 at bats, he had 30 home runs. Um, you know, he played well enough to where the Reds gave him 582 at bats. The runs were okay. 74, 86 RBIs was good. 23 home runs. 
and he and he had you know, even chipped in with 15 steals. So it was really kind of a nice balance uh, skill set, especially when the year before he only had 95 at bats in the major. So he was kind of the, a breakthrough guy. His strikeout rate came out pretty good, 20.9, walk rate 10.2. Um, you know, kind of really five category uh, balanced player. But from May 1st to July 5th, over, you know, just over two months, he had 306, 33 runs, 12 home runs, 42 RBIs. Um, and, you know, it's had some steals. Um, so he, he's, um, <clears throat> but in September, he also played well. He had 290, 13 runs, 14 RBIs, five home runs, and uh, three steals over 100 at bats. So um, his best edge game against lefties. 313, nine home runs, 33 RBIs, over 160 at bats. A little more of a fly ball swing path, 43%. Um, but his home run fly ball rate, 12.0, um, was less than his time at, um, you know, lower than his um, his time at Double A AA and Triple A. So there's potential of pop in that area. And same another guy that just the stat cast data doesn't really kind of jump out. Again, his exit velocity 88.7, hard hit rate 37.1. But when he connects, he kind of puts the ball out of the player. I think he's a kind of a developing player. I think he did overachieve in um, contact batting average 357 last year. And it's in those two years in the mod uh, in the minors in 21 and 22, there was 346 and uh, th in 340. So, you know, a little bit of lower number. Um, and as your strikeout rate goes down, sometimes that comes back with you and you still can potentially go up and bat in our at batting average. So he was the 44th player by fantasy points ga gain score last year, plus 1.83. Um, his ADP is 114, and he's the 64th player off the board, and that's partly due because he's going to shift to outfield. He does qualify at first base, outfield, and third base. So, like, they probably some people think that you know maybe he's going to lose some at bats, but I think he's done well enough where he should be in the lineup on most days, um, and he probably should hit you know third to fifth in the batting order because his you know his approach is a little more stable. He did okay last year. His RBI rate was 16%, you know, a little bit above the league average. So um, just um, a steady player that most likely he will probably get the better slot in the batting order out of the gate until somebody else uh, kind of, you know, gravitates towards that or has more success on the field. Um, Ellie De La Cruz, kind of a wild card for the fantasy market. They get his talent. They understand his upside, but... They think he's going to strike out too much and potentially lose at bats or potentially get set down. So um, he was um, when you're looking at him, his his stats from 2022, um, he just, you know, they're really uh, fantasy market, really kind of excited about his ceiling. He hit 304 over 471 at bats, hit 28 home runs, 86 runs, 86 RBIs, 47 steals. They struck out 30.8 percent of the time. That's too much. You know, some of these young players. That come into the league that are good, you know, if they're like 26% or something like that, you can you can live with that. Especially, you know, in Dela Cruz is a guy that, you know, when he puts the ball in play, 2021 hits 437, uh, 2022, 457, 2023 at AAA, 435. And when you get to the majors last year, it was a 373. So that was a little more reflective of the pullback of the contact batting average, um, even with a similar strikeout rate. His batting average came in a lot less. So most people are thinking he's going to be a really negative in batting average, um, where I potentially think that his contact batting average, is, he hits the ball so hard and hits for high average and puts in play because he's fast as well. So that's kind of an interesting uh, mix of numbers. So last year with AAA with the Reds, like I said, he had a good season, um, really, really 158 bats, did a lot of stuff at 298, 38 runs, 12 home runs, 36 RBIs. And 11 steals. Strikeout rate was about a 26.9. Walk rate was really good. Showed four, showed some growth, 14%. So he was getting better last year. And then he got called up in June. People got excited. He looked really good out of the gate. He hit, you know, his first 126 at bats, you know, 325, 28 runs, four home runs, 16 RBIs, and he had 16 steals. Struck out 28.9%, which is kind of okay. You know, it looked like it was in between the previous season in AAA. Um, you know, not bad for a, a young guy looking at, but after the all-star break, he kind of lost his way, uh, hit 191, but he had 39 runs, nine home runs, 28 RBIs, 19 steals over 262 at bats. If you just look at that and you double it up, he's like 80 runs, 56 RBIs, 18 home runs, 38 steals. That's pretty good. But he whiffed 105 times, 36% strikeout rate 
and there was some value in walks at 9.2 percent so you know the second half numbers don't look uh, well but he's a young kid with more experience so um but overall for the whole year he was almost uh you know eight, almost 20 home runs 18 and he had 50 steals um he had a little ground ball swing path last year but it was much better in those in the um uh his ground ball swing uh, rate was 53.9 percent, but it was much better in the minors so i mean uh, people are gonna like oh he's gonna hit in the ground it's just you know, hitting in the ground and you're you're it's off time you, you know you're not comfortable with plate and you're making weaker contact and you know as you get better and more confident um you're gonna you're gonna be a lot better player so his exit velocity 91.2 is a good spot hard hit rate 45.9 and he just when he connects he can hit the ball really hard and really far um, he did struggle against lefties, which is somewhat of a concern. 184, uh, two home runs, six RBIs over 114 at bats. So that, you know, that could be a platoon role, but he is, you know, a switch hitter. So that's kind of tricky there. Uh, but, you know, I mentioned, um, you know, like I said, the players of the K rate there earlier. So I gave an example here of, um, I talked about the contact batting average, not, in, and I'm not a batting average balls and play guy. So, if he had 500 at bats and he struck out 30 percent of the time he's going to have 350 balls in play and if he'd hit 400 and he put three 350 balls in play um he would hit 280 for the year so if he strike so based on his minor league resume i think that's possible but if he hit 370 which he hit 370 last year um with the same 100 500 bats he would hit 259 so there is to me <clears throat> like his floor in batting average for me is 260 where it potentially could be better um and it all reflective of strikeouts obviously if he strikes out 35 percent of the time his batting average is gonna have a lot more risk if he gets it down to 28 percent he could be even better so it's when he puts the ball in play it hits really hard so um adp 26 it really kind of challenges a, a, a fantasy team uh in development you like his steals you like his potential as home runs you really think he could be a really a 20 25 home run guy maybe and he could steal 50 bases pretty easy if he got on base enough um so but his runs in rbis will kind of come along when he gets on base um but what is his batting average and i explained my position on that so i think of him as more of a guy that i'm going to take in a single league where i can fade batting average or where i'm not punting it i'm just taking a we weaker piece of the puzzle but i potentially know that he has more upside so i like him if you took him in the second round I don't think it's, you know, a bad decision because, you know, he's an explosive type player. And also when we get to um, like to Las Vegas and us in the, um, the high stakes market, he's, he potentially could slide into the third round or, or a little bit later. And that's comparing to a little different players. So he's a um, really, really talented player. I'm excited to see where he goes. Um, really, people really like to watch him play and it's going to be a, a fun year for the Reds and he's going to be part of it. Um, Jameer Candelario is Jameer. Uh, he's just um really kind of surprised because he does he got like fifteen million dollars a year for three seasons and he's just been like you know kind of a steady player but not impactful and um maybe they just wanted one more veteran bat to kind of swing around because their players are young and get them through this year but sometimes when I look at it it kind of clogs up the you know first base third base and he can be in the DH equation for them but kind of blocking some of the young players so uh but in 2022 he was um you know coming off a little better season but he was kind of a disappointment only at 13 home runs 50 rbis contact batting was 291 it was well below, below the year before 358 but um last year um he was Candelario set career highs and runs 77 home runs 22 um even added eight steals which came out of nowhere he only had seven steals in his previous 606 games in the majors Strikeout rate was a little above the league average, 22.1. That might be the league average now with strikeouts increasing. Walk rate, 9.2. Um, you know, falls in line with his career path. Um, his only month, best month of projection, uh, of production came in July. Um, he only hit 240, but he had six home runs, 15 RBIs, 17 steals. So if that's the best there is, that's not really kind of explosive. He missed a little bit of time in September with a back issue. Um, his exit velocity, 88.3. And is not, you know, doesn't like another player that's just, you know, just a steady major league or nothing jumps off. Uh, hard hit rate, 36.3. Same thing. It's just nothing great. So um, over the past three, three seasons, he had 95 uh, combined barrels. So in he's, what do you have? Um, 30, 29, 61 uh, home runs. 
uh, 61, 39, sorry, 29, 51 home runs. Sorry about that. Um, his uh, fly ball rate was a little bit higher, 40.6. So getting a little more loft. Um, home run fly ball rate, 14.0 is okay. So um, if he, I looked at the you know, stat casting and if he had played in, you know, um, Great America ballpark last year he would, for the whole season, he would probably have about 27 home runs. So he's not going to play the whole year there. So, you know, we see, you know, definitely think he could hit a couple more home runs. Um, where he hits in the lineup, I'm not sure. His RBI rates have been 16, 14, 15, 16, just kind of probably league average, most likely going to hit a little down in the order. Um, and he you know, kind of has to prove him. So he, last year he was the 125th uh, batter. Uh, well, sorry, his ADP this year is 213 as the 125th batter. His fantasy points gain score was last year was 86th. And that was, you know, helped by the steal. So if he you know, if he doesn't get the steals that he did last year, and even he got like two or three, um, he would probably be an, a neutral player that you draft. And I kind of think of him as a 75, 20, 70 guy. Um, batting average just really hasn't popped, but a little better ballpark probably can help him. Um, so there's, you know, approaches, the, you know, there's, there's enough to be okay. Um, but I think just think he's more of a steady piece and not a guy that I'm looking forward to get, you know, that he's never going to be a guy that gets drafted um, a lot earlier the fall of the season. So, so when you're looking at some of these players in say, you know, 213, you're looking for a guy that, you know, that's like a 15th rounder and uh, in a, in a, in a um, 15 team league, you want that guy to maybe be a 10th rounder next year, an eighth rounder or even better and pop. So that's what you're kind of looking for. So um, Christian, Incarnacion Strand. Um, this is a player that's, I think the the based on the ADPs, I think they're kind of missing the boat on. Um, he wasn't it wasn't a high draft pick, a fourth fourth rounder um, in 2021 out of the Twins. After a good season at Oklahoma State, he had 361 with 15 home runs, 66 RBIs, four steals, over 227 bats. The the um, the Reds made a really good trade to acquire him and Spencer Steer for Tyler uh, Male. Um, that was kind of an impressive deal for them. Um, uh, so in 2022, between in double A, uh, between uh, high A and double A, he had 304, 76 runs, 32 home, home runs, 114 RBIs, and eight steals over 484 at bats. Um, that was just a really impressive year. Um, he followed it up last year. Um, at Triple A, he was even better. Um, you know, as far as yeah, I would think that overall it was kind of a better number. He hit 278 at bats, 331, 65 runs, 20 home runs, 62 RBIs, two steals. So he's get he got a chance last year with the um, the Reds. Um, he handled himself well in power. 13 home runs, 37 RBIs, over 222 at bats. Um, he did have a spike in his strikeout rate, which was 26.6%. Um, which was higher than triple A that year. It was 21.8 at double A. It was 25% and in high A it was 25.8. So he's more of a guy that fits in that realm of a, like a 25% guy strikeout rate. And when you have for a lot of power and you come in for the minors, I think that's, that's an acceptable number. And I think the strikeout rate 26, uh, 28.6% is more of an outlier and he'll be a lot better this year. His, um, his, uh, his uh, average hit rate over the last couple of years has been really good and improving, you know, 1.9 something. His elite contact batting average um, in the minors um, it has been in the minors, been 430. So we, this is the number that people don't see because they don't, nobody, they used to bab it. His contact batting has been 430. If his strikeout rates, you know, 25% with a 430, he's going to hit for average. Um, and it's shown in the minors and people, that, you know, not sure where he's going to be in the majors. RBA rate with the Reds, 17%. So he was a young kid last year striking out, but he still had a good RBI rate. Um, his contact, um, his average hit rate, um, you know, pull back a little bit was 1.76 with the Reds, um, but that supports 30 home runs with 550 at bats. His contact batting average 3, 392 with the Reds. So everything kind of lined up pretty good there. Hard hit rate was um, 48.4. Uh, that was 49th. Exit velocity 90.3, uh, 99th. Launch, launch angle 86.6. Got to loft. That was 43rd. He's got home run rate uh, was 22% with the Reds. It's been higher than 20 to 20% in every year level of his career. This guy is a home run hitter. When you're looking at when when I'm looking at this player, this guy is the cleanup batter for the Reds. He just 
he's the profile. He's a banger. He's got a pretty good approach. He's going to steal you a few bases. He's got massive upside. If the rest of the lineup gels, he's going to get a ton of RBI chances. This is guy is almost like a, um, you know, I don't think he's a can say he's a slam, slam dunk, but he is a type of guy that you kind of want to get in a developable lineup. So, um, <clears throat> so when, when putting the ball in play, like I said, he hits for high average. Um, the NFBC, his ADP is 171, the 15th uh, second ba baseman option, and then some of them are catchers and stuff like that. So I think of him as the guy that's um, going to hit at least 270, 80 runs, 30 home runs, 90 RBIs out of the gate with 500 at bats. I think he's going to play every day. He's just too good of a player. He's much better. He's, you know, um, much better, more stable than some of their bats. I mean, he's just he's just going to be a, a, a potentially to be a monster. Um, really like him. And I, I kind of say it in the, you know, if you don't see value in it where he is going, then someone's picking your pocket because um, so um, I'm really excited about him. Um, not sure where he, you know, the, the coach speaker, whatever happens, but I'm, I'm going to be following him closely because, you know, so you got to take it. You got to take a stance on some players and, you know, you got to commit to him. And, and he's a player I'm very interested in. Um, Tyler Stevenson is a. Uh, he was a player that um a catcher the last year that looked like he was going to be a lot better on uh, the previous season he had um you know played about a one third of the year hit 319 the batting average looked good but he hit 445 when he put the ball in play which was kind of an outlier um but um what did he do in 2022 he had um, he had a fractured thumb and a broken uh right shoulder cl uh, clavicle in there so he just um like you said he started off really well um you know, over his first 533 at-bats with the Reds, um, he had 296, 84 runs, 18 home runs, 86 RBI. So it looked like if that profile was pretty good. Even with their team structure last year, they didn't have all these young players kind of getting in the way. You didn't know who was going to emerge. So he looked like he had a chance to maybe hit third, fourth, fifth in the batting order. Just underperformed all already across the board as far as, um, you know, there was a lot of catches that got better last year. And I think Stevenson's project, you know, stats are okay you know, the 59 runs, 56 RBIs, 13 home runs, maybe a little shy, um, didn't give me any steals. I think they looked okay, and they were kind of a catch of two stats, but where he got drafted, he was probably like a late ninth rounder and a 15-teamer and a um, maybe 10th rounder, and he just didn't live up to those expectations. Um, strikeout rate went back with 26.1%. It was 20.2 in the minors. Um, so just, you know, not getting there. He did, he was a little bit better last year against lefties, 284 with four home runs, 18 RBIs over 127 at bats. Um, his average hit rate, just not there yet. Um, it's getting a little bit better, 1.558. So he's not really a guy that I think there's going to be a solid 20 home run hitter. Even if he got 500 at bats, I think that he's, you know, he just falls into that, you know, steady category, exit velocity, 89.4. Hard hit rate 43.5, a little bit better than some of the other the Reds, um, um, but um, but it, and, and it did show improvement over 2022. So he's the 18th catcher drafted this year with an ADP of 236. Um, he'll, you know, last year they Reds said they're going to get him 140 to 150 games. He did do that, um, but 43 of his games last year at DH. I don't think that's happening this year. That's going to be a problem. He even had eight games at first base. So I don't think he's going to get a lot of extra at bat. So I think he's more of a 120 start guy this year, maybe a little bit more. We'll see how, how they uh, handle the catcher position. But so 450 at bats, maybe 480 at bats. I don't think, a, you know, um, a lot is going to change there. So um, he's just um, just more of a steady guy, 270, 15 home runs, maybe 60, 60. He's going to hit lower in the lineup. So his kind of category is going to be a problem. Um, and he's only had, uh, you know, four steals in his pro career, you know, so there's not, and he's going to offer you nothing, um, in steals. Um, yeah, that's it there for him there. Will ben Benson, um, you know, they looked at, um, roster resources or reference sometimes and, uh, you know, they have this guy in the lineup and, you know, I'm going to do these players in order and, you know, you got to get a mental picture of him, you know, when you do them, but, um, he's a player that's been a, kind of an underachiever his whole career, you know, got drafted as a first rounder by Cleveland Indians, you know, before they were the guardians, um, he 14th overall in 2016 out of high school, hit 210 over his first 565 at bats. The home runs were okay. 20, uh, 75 RBIs, 250, 70 steals, you know, pretty good, pretty good 
skill set there, walked enough, 14.8%, really, really good number, but he struck out 31.4% of the time. Um, got a little better in 2022, hit 375, 75 runs, 17 home runs, 45 RBI, 16 stolen bases, over 316 at-bats. Got his strikeout rate down to 22.7%. That was a really, really big move for him. Um, got a little chance with Cleveland, just didn't get it done. Then he ended up getting traded to the Reds before last season. Um, when he started out at AAA last year, just really hit 206, 97 at bats. He, you know, 11 home, uh, three home runs, 11 steals, kind of the same profile what he did. Um, struggled when he fr first got called up um, uh, last year. He hit against lefties. He only had hit 146 with the Reds, two home uh, no home runs, two RBIs, 14 strikeouts, so 41 at bats. So he's not going to play against lefties. Um, he didn't, the Reds didn't give him over 16 at bats in any month. Um, and his um, over his last um, <clears throat> over his two or last 254 at bats. Um, probably wording this wrong, but he hit 291, 11 home runs, 31 RBIs, and 19 steals and 47 runs. So those numbers. For a half a season, it looked pretty good, and I think people kind of gravitate to, to that, but he didn't get enough playing time. His strikeout rate is just the same as it was, you know, at AAA, uh, AAA or whatever, 31.3%, um, uh, just really um, too high. And his walk rate's okay, 12.2. Um, his contact batting average, this is really key. This is a res reverse of, like, Dela Cruz and Strand. His contact batting average last year was 429. Great number, right? Like to see it, but. The problem is this college, I mean, his previous re resume in the minors um, at AAA last year, 323, the year before in limited bats for the Reds, 278, 249, 253. So I think he's more of a guy that's the contact batter, which is going to be more in the 350, 360 range, and that makes him like a 220 hitter, and that's a problem. Um, hard hard uh, exit velocity was good, 90.2. Hard hit rate, you know, a little, little bit lower, 42.4. So so I think that he's, um, you know, he's a platoon player at best. His, his uh, ADP at 309 kind of is a little bit high, especially when you, you consider him, you know, maybe 450 at bats. But after looking at Drake, Jake Fraley, Fraley is so much better player than him. Um, and he's going to kind of get, no, you know, take he's going to be the starter for sure. So Benson's going to have a lot less at bats. Um, so, you know, like I said, that he's kind of a gamble. The steals are there, kind of intriguing when you see these numbers last year. But he, he's not a player I'm interested in. Uh, at all. It's just, uh, it just doesn't line up for me. Um, as far as um, bench off and Noel, no LV Marte, just um, this player, you know, he, uh, when you look at his stats, you know, he looks like, oh, that's a nice player. He's getting, you know, 20 home runs, 20 steals and, you know, the contact batting average, in, you know, 391, 370, 365, 349 and then you know last year with the reds short of bats it was 404 it doesn't jump out his average hit rate was 1.65 1 1.68 164 162 144 that really doesn't show like a ton of power so he doesn't jump off the page in those kind of key categories but i mean there's there's a good player here um really good player and um so they said the mariners signed him out of Dominic, dominican republic at age 17 over four seasons in the minors hit 282 290 run 90 runs, 46 home runs, 238 RBIs, 82 steals, over 1,500 and two at bats. So about say three seasons. So maybe about 18 home runs, 27 steals. It looks like um, walk rate was good, 11%. Um, and, uh, his strikeout rate was about league average, 20.2. So he controlled the strike zone pretty good. Take some walks. Um, it did take him two seasons to get about high A. They kind of, you know, interesting that he was a talented player, but they kind of held him back a little bit. Uh, made the jump to um, to uh, double A last year. Um, got a little bit better. Hit um, 281, eight home runs, 10 steals, and uh, 25 uh, RBIs over 186 at bats. Um, and then when he got to triple A, kind of had similar results. 280, you know, 20 RBIs, eight steals, but he only had three home runs. A little less power. His approach was fine, 17.5% walk rate. I mean, a strikeout rate and 10.8 walk rate. Um, when the Reds called him up, um, they gave him some chances in August and in September. Didn't play every day, but he, you know, had enough at bats. But he hit 380 with three home runs, 13 runs, 13 RBIs, one steal. Um, walk rate went back a little bit, 6.5%, but strikeout rate was okay. Um, his exit velocity, 91.3. 
um, and it starts off in a good spot. Hard hit rate, 46.1. So uh, he, he uh, was playing winter ball. And he had a hamstring injury in November. Um, I think he's progressing pretty well. Um, <clears throat> the only thing when I looked at his minor league resume and his profile, the only thing that kind of stood out for me that was he had a lot of infield flies, 20 percent of uh, infield fly rate is just an insane high number. So he's, you know, just giving up um, a lot of um, easy outs via bad tying and getting jammed, um, you know, getting, you know, diving at the ball or something like that. So um, his fly ball rate last year was 30 percent. So about a quarter of, you know, say 77.5 percent of those or, you know, or, you know, 6 percent of those end up being fly balls. So it's like 30 balls that are, you know, just like kind of giving away out. So uh, like to see him improve on that um, at ADP of one. 162 uh, as the 95th batter. So they, the high stakes market think he's going to be in the starting lineup this year and have a job. Um, he profiles better, um, you know, definitely in the outfield because he could potentially slide to right, right field, but I think they have more of a third base. So you, you, when you're looking at it, I have uh, Edward uh, Incarnacion Strand playing first base. He'll slam down. So that means Jameer um, Candelario is going to play third. Um, that puts Stencer, Spencer Steer in left field. Um, you get Jonathan India is the wild card where you can just think of him as potentially the DH. So, you know, where is, you know, where is he going to play? So, um, so is he going to be the third base? And so there's just, it's a little confusing there. And even um, in right field Benson, it's fairly. So there's, there's one extra player for the spot. He's a young guy, um, but he has a lot of upside. I think he's deserving to move up in the batting order. He protects his, uh, you know, a 20, uh, 25-20 uh, uh, guy kind of early in his career. He's actually um, a lot better player um, than he's actually profiled so far. Um, I think, you know, so there's a, there's a lot of um, little interesting, if uh, uh, a lot of interesting stuff about him. So um, I think potentially next year, when he gets drafted, he's going to probably be a um, go up, be a top four round pick. So I th I'm not 100 percent that he's going to get all the at bats you want, but I'm kind of interested in him. But I'm not sure that I can pay that price point. Um, and then, you know, he, he has to make sure he's cleared of his hamstring injury. So um, but he's going to be he's, he's one of those rising stars and he's his his approach is a lot more stable than uh, Dela Cruz and. Um, so, you know, he's, he could end up hitting in a good part of that lineup, and he's just going to be a, probably a decade-long stud. It, it, it look, it's looking like it's just it's a matter of just weeding out the extra player on this team. Um, Jake Fraley, guy that's really kind of really kind of battled injuries and just really hasn't got, got to where you would have expected. Um, he was another guy that was played for, with Seattle. Um, he played, you know, he had 430 bats of experience between 2021 and 2022 between the two teams. He had 60 runs, 21 home runs, 64 RBIs, 14 steals. That kind of li really lined up pretty good if he could play a full season. Um, you know, he missed some time with a knee injury for three months. Um, and then he had, uh, you know, hamstring and shoulder injuries in 2021. So the ham uh, the knee injury, I think, was in, I think that was in 2022. So, um but last year, um, for over the first four months, uh, Fraley was one of the better players for the Reds. Hit 268 over 284 bats, but he had 40 runs, 15 home runs, 60 at 63 RBIs. Really, really good number for that number of bats. 19 steals, um, and he really didn't have any playing time against left. He was five for 34 with no home runs, five RBIs. A wrist injury pushed him to the injury list in June, and Fraley missed all of August with a toe injury that required surgery after the season. Strikeout rate was the lowest of his career, 18.7%. You know, when comparing to Benson, he's just like a lot better stable bat. Walk rate, 9.7. Home run fly ball rate, 14.4, was a three-year low. So there's a little bit more there. Um, his, uh, and, his, uh, and his fly ball rate went up a little bit, 39.1. So hard hit, exit velocity does not check any boxes, 84.6. Hard hit rate, 30.8. Um, just, you know, paint a weaker pitcher. So, um He's he's got he's really a really nice player. I really like, like him a lot. He, I mean, he potentially could bat lead off in this team too. Um, he might even be the better player out of the gate. Um, you know, but he's more of a corner outfielder. So his his average hit rate has been 1.759 over the last three seasons. So that's kind of a guy that if he ever had 550 at bats, he could be sneaky power even with those 
you know, the exit velocity, high net rates don't line up that well. You know, we just when he, he has the ability to get the ball out, could steal 20 bases. Um, he's not going to give him much of a chance against lefties, um, I don't think. Um, so I, I definitely think he's going to be in the lineup on the opening day. His ADP at 329, I like him better than Benson. I, I, I would take him first. He just, you know, but he's going to be a little bit more of a micromanage. You know, if he's playing a couple lefties and on a weekend, you're going to have to sit him. Um, but even with 450 at bats, I, I think he could be a 2020 player, uh, serve, serviceable player in a deep league, a little bit more challenging in a 12 team or a 10 team league. So, um, but the Reds have a really, really nice offense. And, a, and there's going to be a lot of upside. And if, if they get pitching, this team's going to score a lot of runs. They're going to be better this year. And they're going to have a winning record and really kind of threaten, you know, to win the uh, the NL Central.